Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today I wanted to jump into a topic that I think will be pretty helpful for some of you. And that is how to get the best colors that you can out of your Fujifilm camera. Mainly focusing on Fuji because that's what I've been shooting on the most lately, both the X-T5 and the GFX. And I think I can break it down pretty simply and give you guys some tips and tricks for getting the best colors that you can out of your camera as well. Um, some of this is going to be pretty straightforward and simple. Some of it might be some stuff that you've never heard of before. Um, but all in all, I'm hoping that this video will help any of you out there looking to create a better color palette for your images. Now, by no means is this the only concrete way to get great colors. And also this is for my very distinct color palette. So some people like that, some people don't, um, but take that for what it's worth. And let's go ahead and dive into today's video. Now, first and foremost, the easiest way to start getting colors that might look a little more, uh, now, first and foremost, the first thing that I'm going to do on Fuji cameras, and this is probably a little self-explanatory is using film simulations. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean only for JPEG photos. This also works for raw, um, especially when you import your photos into Lightroom, you can add the simulations back on. I don't think it looks exactly the same, but it's pretty close. And I love using these to my advantage when I'm shooting on Fuji. Typically, I use the Provia or Velvia simulations, and I also really love the Acros uh, for black and white, uh, specifically the G, Acros G, I think is what it's called. Um, so those three are what I typically use uh, when I'm shooting on Fuji cameras. Um, it's a great base, especially if you are looking to kind of see what the edit could look like um, once you import stuff. Uh, that's really what I use it for, especially when I'm shooting raw. It's very helpful and it allows me to kind of get a good picture in my head of what the photo is actually gonna look like once it's edited. And again, when I hop into Lightroom, I often base a lot of my edits off of these. Uh, I find it helpful. Some of them are a little overpowering, but you can always adjust that with contrast and with saturation adjustments. And I'll usually pair that with the tone curve and a few other things to get the look that I want. But simply put, the film simulations are great. And I do shoot JPEG a decent amount on the X-T5. I find that the JPEG images look great, um, just as is. And that's kind of the reason I got the camera is to not have to do more editing. <laughs> so I do enjoy shooting JPEG on that. Usually I'll shoot RAW and JPEG just to get um, the flexibility if I need it. Uh, but a lot of times the JPEG photos are perfect and good enough for me. Now in tandem with the film simulations, I also sometimes adjust the tonality within the camera settings. Again, when I'm shooting raw, this doesn't really affect the images too much, but I do love getting a preview of what I'm going to be shooting. Um, you can almost equate this to importing a LUT to a cinema camera so you can see kind of what things are looking like as you're shooting them. And I do find this very helpful, especially with the way I like to shoot. I wanna be able to preserve the highlights as much as I can. And so typically I'll bring the highlights down to minus one or two uh, while I'm shooting just so I can see kind of what it looks like. Um, sometimes I'll even reduce the saturation, which I think is just called color on the camera. So you can bring that down all the way to minus three if you want. Typically I'm at around minus one or so. Uh, and I find that when I'm shooting this, um, I get a pretty good picture of what it's going to look like when I import into Lightroom. Now, secondly, something else that I would definitely look at if you're looking to improve the way that your colors look is to actually really focus on how the photo looks in the back of the screen. Now this applies to pretty much every camera and I wanna go into a little bit of depth here and explain why that is. So to me, when I'm shooting photos, I really don't wanna to have to save the image in the edit. I wanna be able to get it almost as perfect as I can in the camera. So all I'm really doing is just kind of enhancing what's already there when I'm shooting. Um, this is a bit of a general piece of advice, but I do think it's really changed the way how I shoot photos. I think I used to try to save the image in the edit and once I started shooting um, a lot more in camera first, uh, the colors started to turn out a lot better in post. Now there are a few things you can focus on when you're shooting uh, and trying to get the best you can in camera. Uh, for me, it's definitely looking at the light, it's looking at the highlights, the shadows, the tone, um, working on the color, how that looks. Um, and then if you break this down even more, it's you know even more detailed things. Like if you're shooting a subject, um, working at skin tones, looking at um, the different color combos and maybe what they're wearing with the background, uh, really trying to get that the way that you want it in camera if you have control over it, I think will really allow for the editing process to be a lot more simple. Um, because again, when I import these, I don't wanna have to do too much. I wanna be able to adjust the tone curve a little bit, add some contrast, and that's really about it. Uh, I don't do very heavy edits anymore. I used to do these really heavy, dark, moody edits all the time, and that was fun while it lasted, uh, but I've definitely gravitated towards a much brighter and colorful color palette. And I think focusing on how the photo actually looks on the back of the screen as you're shooting it is 
really helpful and a pretty profound uh, decision that you can make when you're taking photos and want to kind of keep the color in mind. Now, thirdly, I touched on this just a few minutes ago, but focusing on the actual light that's coming into your sensor is also extremely important. And with that, noticing how each camera reads light differently and how it interprets it. Now for me, the GFX reads light very differently than the X-T5 does, so I have to keep that in mind when I'm shooting. Um, and I've shot these cameras now for a good amount of time, the GFX especially, so I know kind of what I need to preserve in terms of highlights and shadows and dynamic range so that everything is properly balanced when I import. And when you keep the light kind of in the forefront of your mind, I think, you know, again, you're not trying to save it in the edit, right? Like the light really kind of works for itself. And at the end of the day, lighting to me is probably one of the most important components of photography. So getting that right uh, the first time is pretty imperative. I do notice that Fuji cameras overall, especially with skin tones, um, the skin tone is very soft, but sometimes can be a little overexposed. So I definitely keep that in mind when I'm shooting. I tend to underexpose my photos quite a bit. I can always bring that back up in post. And both the X-T5 and the GFX have plenty of latitude to be able to do that. The next thing I do when I'm importing into Lightroom is making sure that I don't overdo the edit. And this is very easy to do, I think, especially when you're getting started with editing. Um, it's very easy to pick apart Lightroom and drag every slider in which way um, in different directions just to try to see what it does. And I do encourage that in the beginning, but I think if you're trying to have a more refined editing approach, Keeping the things that you change uh, as low as possible, I think, is a good thing overall. Now, typically when I import an image into Lightroom, especially if they're shot on something like the GFX, um, I don't mess with color too much. I don't mess with HSL very often. I'll sometimes split tone. Um, I'll definitely adjust the tone curve because I think that has the most kind of profound effect on how the image turns out. Um, and I'll definitely go through the basic tab and adjust things like exposure, contrast, and highlights and shadows. Uh, but overall, that's really all that I'm doing. I don't really want to drag and drop every single slider and therefore the image is just so cooked by the end of the process. Um, I want to keep it very simple. I want to keep it very clean. And I want to be able to kind of just have this nice glow to each photo that I do. And to bring it back to something that I said earlier, so much of this is how it's shot in camera. I'll put up on the screen right now a few raw photos that I've shot over the last several months and then also the edited photo on the right side of the screen. And what you'll notice is the image isn't really edited that crazy. Like it's pretty simple from uh, how it looks inside of the camera to how the edit is actually when it's finished. And that's definitely by design. I want the photos to already look great when they're inside of the camera. And therefore minimal adjustments in Lightroom definitely just enhance everything that's there and they don't take away from the actual composition. Now with all this being said, Fuji cameras are pretty amazing at what they do. I really have enjoyed my time picking apart the system and really learning how to get the best colors out of each image. And that is definitely my recommendation to all of you guys as well. Whether you have a Fuji, whether you have a Canon, a Nikon, a Leica, it doesn't really matter. I think the reason that I'm able to get the colors that I do is because I've really worked at it over the last five, six, seven years just with the Fuji system. And with the Canon system, it's been even longer than that, closer to 10. So keeping all that in mind, you're not gonna be able to learn all of this necessarily overnight. I think a lot of color is personal preference. And at the end of the day, you're going to find what works best for you. But I do think some of the things that I've said kind of apply to pretty much every camera that you're shooting with besides maybe the film simulations, really working on getting that photo right uh, the first time when you're shooting it in the actual camera not trying to save it too much in the edit, really focusing on light, how light shapes and kind of reflects off different surfaces and ultimately like illuminates your subject. Those are all really important things that you can shoot and practice with no matter what camera that you have. I'm going to do some more videos breaking down lighting setups and especially how I like to work with light in the future. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any questions about some different settings for Fuji cameras. But this is pretty much my go-to for how I like to shoot and edit my color. Now before this video wraps up, I didn't want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, for sponsoring today's episode. As you guys know, Squarespace has been a longtime supporter of the YouTube channel and I really have pretty much always use them as a website builder. Now Squarespace really has something for everyone in any creative field when it comes to building a website. Everything from online stores to appointments to building your own asset library, Squarespace really makes it easy and simple for everyone to not only run a business, sell e-commerce products, and also just present their art in a beautiful way. Me being a photographer, I just don't really have time to nitpick and build a website from scratch. And using Squarespace throughout these years has really just made it so simple to the point where I don't have to even think about it too much. 
And that's really all I can ask for out of a website builder. If you guys want to check out Squarespace for yourself, there'll be a link down in the description to receive 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Thanks so much to Squarespace as always for sponsoring this video. And thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.